updating the local recording setting, but as, I guess as long as it worked for you, then I think we'll be all set. But we're live, yeah. man. We're live to the world. We are live, and uh, yeah. Let's uh, get this show on the road. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Alien Investigations, the only channel that lives at the corner of Broad Street, Philadelphia, and Scully's Dream. I am your host, Stephen, and we are continuing our coverage of the 2024 X Files CCG Virtual Tournament. And I've got my co host for said tournament with me, hailing all the way from Oregon. Mike, how are we doing this evening, sir? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. You know, weather's, yep. weather's nice. Excellent. And at this point, we only have, if I'm not mistaken, uh, seven games left in the pre-playoff season before we get into the finals. And that's when, you know, the stakes are on the line. We just had a really riveting game just this afternoon between yeah. um, Stafford Parker and uh, Matt Sauron. That was his first foray into the tournament. And at yep. this point in time, Mike, we currently have two of our 14 contenders, two who have a perfect 3-0 record for the regular pre-playoff season. That is Jonathan Hagee and Stafford Parker. So congrats to both gentlemen. So at this point in time, Mike, we know that Jonathan and Stafford are looking at bypassing the first round of the finals as we uh, as we finish up these uh, last few pre-playoff games. We're going to head into the finals, and we're going to have a few rounds there. Uh, Jonathan and Stafford at this point in time are going to be looking at skipping the first round and they'll be coming in at round two unless unless well yeah. unless uh, one of our lucky contestants tonight also makes it to three and O. Oh. I wish him the best um, it throws a little bit of a monkey wrench into how we were going to do it but you know what we, we got some help we got some ideas we're going to make it fair for everybody uh, there mm -hmm. might be a little bit of David May action and involved in that, uh, helping to decide. There might be a little bit of hat drawing, uh, but uh, we'll make some magic happen. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Excellent. And so our current, uh, our, our, our two players for this evening, uh, one of them will be wrapping up their final matchup, and uh, the other one uh, only has one under his belt. So, um, so his last, two, so his two games are going to be the two that we need to keep an eye on uh, for this last seven. But by and large, we're going to be hopefully looking at wrapping up the the majority of these remaining games this Sunday, April twenty first. By that point we'll have nearly all of them done. And so we'll have a pretty good idea where we are. Um, I've got the uh, standings uh, updated regularly, both in the Discord, as well as the X-Files Collectible Card Game Facebook group. So you can find them both there. If you're curious where we are, I update them after every matchup. So people get a sense of where they are. But of course, if you're trying to avoid spoilers, I wouldn't suggest looking at them until after you watch them. So I know some of these games are so riveting and you don't want to find out who's the winner. So totally understandable. But nevertheless, why don't we, Mike, let's get our yeah. contestants in here, shall we? Yeah, bring them in. Bring them in. yeah I, I believe they're ready to throw down. All right. Indeed. And in this corner, hailing all the way from Canada and uh, regrettably uh, has a currently an 0-2 record. But, you know, he's looking to go out on a high note. We have Mike DeChuck all the way from Ontario. How are we doing, Mike? Doing well. Hoping, hoping for a win tonight. Excellent. Yeah, let's go out with let's go out with a bang. Um, but I got to tell you, you, you got a you got a, a tough customer on the other side of the ring, Mike. And right now he only has a 1-0 record because he's only played one game at this point but you know uh that uh, i i know from having played him in many a games that uh you know he he won't make it easy for you so if you pull off a win it will be nothing less than admirable so good luck against uh nathan who's hailing from wisconsin nathan good to see you how are we at, how are we doing sir i'm fine i'm doing <laughs> fine <laughs> well, aside from I'm, technical difficulties I'm <laughs> yeah, aside from technical difficulties, I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready to play some X Files. Get, get be, beaten by Mike here. <laughs> well, we'll see if he has any uh, relentless fruits, uh, uh, relentless pursuits uh, to throw a wrench in you know your your cog of machinations as you're trying to uh, go for your second win. Um, but yeah, uh, Mike, I, I'm sure you will put up a fight nonetheless. Gentlemen, you two have both you two have both sent me your hidden X-Files, so Mike and I at this point 
I know there's two mics in here, so you gotta keep you gotta keep up with me, people. <laughs> um, so we know what your hidden X Files is. Yeah, Mike has them right there. Oh, way to go, Mike! You just spoiled it for everyone. So, <laughs> and um, and so the, watch those reflections. Yeah, Mike, why do you have to keep shining your forehead like that all the time? Come on, it's creating a glare. Uh, so anyway, the, the object of the game is, as always has been, be the first to identify your opponent's hidden X file. Gentlemen, Mike and I are going to be waiting in the wings, and if you need any help, just give us a call. We'll let you guys figure out who's going to go first, and have a good match. All right. Thanks, Jens. You know what good I just luck. realized? What's that? Um, I shuffled all of my agents to my deck. <laughs> I've done that. Not great. Let's try to. Oh, it looks like my camera is non functional. Give me one second to fix that. No worries. While uh, you're doing that, uh, I have a dice here, six sider. Just uh, call it odds or evens. Uh, give me one second. Sure. My camera did not want to jump out there. Try this again. Oh, here we go. I don't know what's going on with this thing. There we go. All right. All right. We'll see if that if that works. All right. Um, so dice. I will. Uh, I will take evens on that. Evens. It is. It's a four. Beautiful. So I will go first. As soon as I pluck my agents out of my massive deck here, let's see. How many cards are you running from your deck? Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. What about you? I paired mine down to sixty-two. Yeah, that's 62. pretty good. Hey, Daryl. Hey, John. And Jonathan, Mister Three and O himself. Yeah. Study studying the, 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 the videotape. Yeah. Man, this is gonna get irritating with my with my camera, I can tell. But we're gonna try to plow through it. <laughs> is that all? 89, baby. <laughs> is that who said that? John. Oh, okay. 60 stick city two is uh is a nice slim slim deck i like that a lot i i, I don't mind it i i find that i wish there were a couple other cards in the deck now now that i've played twice and sure all right so i think i'm i think i'm solid with that shuffle all right let's reorient some stuff here and we'll do my agent reveal which if you've been watching you probably know it's Mulder Spiller Lamana Manners and Hosteen a formidable and team let's hope and I'm let's just start. rocking the, the OG I've got Mulder, Scully and Skinner yeah I'll tell you that's that's not a bad team at all they um between the three of them you've got a lot of skills covered there yeah so. wait i don't think lamana gets a token does he it's just his it's just so yeah, once, per game. once per game yeah however hosting does hosting does games. yeah okay solid and i'll do my seven here I'll grab the seven as well you know one of the interesting things about uh about x files is what you get is what you get in your hand yeah not sure how i feel about that so all right we're gonna um draw my card for the turn Okay. I'm going to generate some res. It's going to be three, uh, one each off Spiller, Lamana, and Hosting. Put me at eight. 
And then Mulder's two are going to be used to draw cards. I'll take two of those and pass it over to you. Um, ugh. I'm going to stick with what I got. Okay. Um, by that, by that you mean uh, not buying cards either. I'm not buying. I'm not selling. I'm not. Interesting. 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 Okay. Well, let's see. All right. Um, no healing, no requisition deployment. I will send everybody to the field. Okay. And during the deployment phase, let's Albert Hostein and take a look at what you're working with. All right. I have a Sheriff Daniels. A festival that, of uh, 100 goats. He has subterfuge, uh, prerequisite, uh, subterfuge three. Okay. Uh, Festival of the Hungry Ghosts. If played, you cannot uh, play events while investigating. Okay. A cellular phone. Nice. Computer access denied. Eliminating the source. Langley and a Langley. And My now goodness. You probably, now you can probably see why I didn't want to sell any cards. Yeah, no kidding. All right, so I can get uh, get a conspiracy card here. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty good on computer, I think. So uh, computer access denied doesn't really scare me. Festival of the Hungry Ghosts, really. You've got to pair it with something else. Um. Eliminating the source could monkey wrench with things a little bit. What does Sheriff Daniels cost? Two? Three. Three. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think eliminating the source is probably the one I'm going to take. That's not my final answer, though. Let me let me mull this for a second. No Man, that's a good hand. Subterfuge, I'm not great on. I think. No, I do have, I do have the three. Yeah, eliminating the source is going to be the. Okay. Here. So that is hosting. Um, and how's that? What kind of what kind of skills does? Skinner have here. It's kind of crazy that I need to check on all of these things already. <laughs> Bureaucracy four, criminal investigation three, uh, evidence collection two, subterfuge three, and then long range two, close range three, health five, res one. I mean, I could Lamana your cellular phone and force Skinner to spend his time in the field. I'm just not sure if that's a good good use of his token. One second. I'm just checking on Scully's skills too. No problem. There are just so many. Your team has so many skills. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so I'm not going to Lamana at this point. Okay. Um, I'm going to, during the case assignment phase, use uh, one of Mulder's tokens to play Coastal Northwest Oregon, which is a alien investigation and affiliation site. All right. And I think that's going to be the only one. Let's take a look at one, one thing here. Okay. Yep, that's it. Okay. So uh, turn it over to you for bluffs. Bluffs. Okay. So uh, you want to just uh, give me a quick rundown what your computers and your subterfuge are? Yeah. Uh, subterfuge is three, I believe. I've got two off hosting and one off Mulder. And my computer is one for computers four, it looks like. Yeah. So everything I have is kind of useless right now. All right. Uh, there's nothing that I can do. Okay. So I'm going to um, send everybody. And I'm going to... Spend a manners token. Okay. To go search for a witness. Let's see. Yep, I'm going to grab Mrs. Mulder. Okay. And hopefully Mrs. Mulder is going to get me a couple questions in here. And can you read me the effect for the? Uh, yeah. Mulder? So um, I will pay the five to play her. Three, four, five. This is Mulder. Uh, adds zero to a team's alien investigation or behavioral skill check. If this card is used in a successful site investigation, the owning player may ask, "Is your X Files affiliation government?" In addition to the site question for zero cost. All right. So I think barring anything crazy, I'm going to get to ask those questions. I think so. So go ahead. All right. So I will uh, first ask, this is also an affiliation question. So it's going to be, the, the first one is your X-Files affiliation government. Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. This game is going to be quick. Okay. Now the site question is kind of pointless unless I <laughs> I want to take a guess, I guess. Um, and do I? Do it. Imagine get, winning first turn. That'll be, a, they'll, they'll give you the belt forever. I have, a, I have a one in eight chance, but I do get to give you an affiliation question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me take a look and see if I if it makes any kind of sense here. You know, I have two two government affiliations that have that each have a I'm sorry, let me rephrase this. I have two X files that um, each have a unique result. And so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna give it a try. All right. <laughs> this may be incredibly stupid, but um, uh, how about 
is your X file Dwayne Barry? Are you kidding me? Dwayne Barry. Holy cow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> what? That's that's game. Good night, everyone. <laughs> wow. Okay. After, after, after I played Staff Parker, I said I'm never playing I'm never playing this again. But yeah, after this, I'm I'm done. I'm out selling all my cards. <laughs> oh, wow. oh wow. Well I don't even I'm, feel good about that one. I'm sorry, wow. Mark. No, that's I, awesome. That, that, who, yeah. who's done who's done I that? had a one in eight shot to get that. I can't believe that happened. Mm. Well, Mike. Um, so, yeah. any other plans tonight? I mean, the night is young, yeah. obviously. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. 20 minutes in, and we're already done. So, thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So, so <laughs> Mrs. Mulder is the star of the game, I guess. So yeah, really. Wow. Well, wait, if I understand, Nathan, did you – so do you ask the Mrs. Mulder question after the site investigate? I can't I, – I've never played well, it her. Really it says oh, okay. you can, you can ask can do it in order. addition to the site question, so I don't know. Um, yeah, either way. Yeah, you got it, so. Well, but, do, you, do you guys want to want to make a ruling on that? I don't really think it matters, does it? No, no. There's, no. I, I don't think rule it matters. Absolutely. You cheated. You cheated, and the, the game is forfeit. I will... <laughs> well, so at this point now, Nathan, your record is currently 2-0, and and you have one more game ahead of you, and that is uh, with Sky Evans. And I believe you have you guys scheduled that one, or is that one of the two I have yet to? No, I have not. Uh, All right, well, get guys. cracking at it now because you, you've got plenty of time to see free time this evening now. So, bravo <laughs> on that, Mike. That's, uh, that's, tough that's break. Incredible. I know three and a, that's, or that's zero the, three. That's the game. But, that's the game. Yeah, yeah, but this one I can't. You can't even chalk it up to being a fault of your deck, really. I mean, you had really good cards in your you that first hand you drew was pretty intimidating yeah um, even with the hosting token thrown in you still had some options provided nathan didn't try to sp if he split up his team then obviously he would have been having a, I was, a chance I, was, it, but I was more worried about him lamenting my cell phone than than i was about him winning first turn yeah and i'll tell you i almost uh i almost did it but <laughs> i thought you were gonna <laughs> it actually it actually um yeah. I wanted Skinner in the bureau so that I could authorize access only mm -hmm. and stop his investigation. So if he if he brought Skinner up to the field, I could not I could not play that card. Right. Now maybe I should have cell phoned it anyway. I've got other stuff, you know, but I don't know. And, and I mean, you know, Mike, you you have an amazing opportunity now, however, if you think about it this way, right? Because now that your games are done and you know it's yeah you're own three but now now if you go into the finals and you start winning right and you go all the way you did it with an original oh and three record man that's that's an amazing feat yeah so it's possible man you just don't know how the cards are going to come up or if somebody's going to randomly guess a one and eight shot and yeah take it well you know what i've I, i've there, there's no there's no counter for hosting which no. kind of sucks. Hail, man. I think, but I think not I think, on turn one. Yeah, but not on, yeah. not, if, if you're smart, you use hosting the first turn. You try and right. get that out of the way. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think I think everybody has a hosting in their deck. <laughs> At least everyone that I've played has had a hosting in their deck. So almost everyone has it, but not everyone. And I and the thing is, is like I yeah, I mean. Is uh, the question now is starting to become is like is what people are going to do with their agent teams? Are they going to change it up because their opponents know exactly what their teams were in the pre playoffs and they're thinking, well, like for instance, those who have currently a, a pretty solid record, like Jonathan Stafford, is like, well, are they going to change up their teams or are they not? You know, it, like as Dave May said during that interview, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you know, but at the same time. That could prove to be uh, a potential defect going in because people can, there are counters that you can apply to it, not necessarily for the token itself, but if you know your opponent is going in with hosting, for instance, which, again, a lot of people do, and what 
is what is hosting's primary skill? I mean, you guys all know what this is. What is it? Occult investigation. There you go. And He's so, a solo runner. He, yes, exactly. People uh, can use hosting to solo a site like Arlington, Virginia, or the most common site of all of these 14 decks, which is Browning, Montana, Cult Investigation 4. So there is an adversary, for instance, called Poltergeist Attack that has an occult, act, occult investigation activator. So you know a lot of people are running hosting in their in their teams. I would be including two copies of Poltergeist Attack because not only can it be played on an occult investigation site for which you're likely to see when you got a hosting on your opponent's team, but also the, the Poltergeist Attack is impervious to combat attacks. It's a ghost. So you can knock out hosting in uh, with that card easily and send him to the hospital for three rounds. So again, I'm throwing that tip out there for everyone tuning in. Knowing that hosting is a common uh, agent on everyone's teams and that Browning, Montana is the most common site with Arlington, Virginia, not too far behind that, two copies of Poltergeist Attack is um, my prescription to that. And that's if they come up, then yeah, you're going to be able to get hosting in the hospital for three turns. And if your opponent is maybe too slow to realize, oh, maybe I should play hosting's token before I got sent to the hospital. And there you go. So again, just a, a just a one possibility uh, for refining those decks. But that's uh, that's what I would be doing if I was in the tournament. Mike, what advice do you got for the contenders as we're narrowing down the last few games and looking at the finals? Uh, you know, yeah. in the horizon. You know, <clears throat> when I uh, recently uh, played um, uh, Guillaume. Uh, I, I played like a brand new deck, a, a brand new thing I, I created. I was going for something new, and it took that game with his. Oh my God, he's good! But it, it took that game, uh, no matter who I played, to just kind of show me what was going to work, what wasn't going to work. You guys now are unfortunately in a position where some of you have had three games now to look and see what would what would work, um, and remove said cards and add said cards and whatnot. Um, I will say, uh, just this morning's game, I was sitting here and I was looking at the different agents and I mean, even I came up with a new team. I've actually got it sitting here and, uh, that I was just like, holy crap, I think this could really be an amazing thing. So you will see different, uh, aspects of card play from, you know, like what everybody else is playing, what everybody else has in their deck, but at the same time, regardless of what they have. You might still come up with something new that you, you think is going to work better. It doesn't matter what they have. It's going to work better for you. It's an offensive move versus a defensive move. This is called um, metagaming, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I you know, if nothing else, better bust. But, uh, but no, I, I think uh, I think we're going to see some, some interesting uh, changes. My prediction... Ghostbusters 2 style. Hairless pets. Hairless pets, yep. <laughs> Night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is that I think it's going to be about a 50 50 split. I think we're going to see people that might trade out one or two cards here and there. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see the other 50% of people are going to go full gamut, full different deck, full new agents. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting split. That's my prediction. Because uh, the people and and the weird thing about this too, my my second prediction about this is, I, I think the people that are doing better are the ones that are probably thinking about changing a little bit more than they should. Well, it's I'm, not, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I'm mm -hmm. overhauling. I'm 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 blo <laughs> blasting the shit out of this deck. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is just pure luck, though. I mean, no, I, I know, I know, but yeah, I, 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 based on, based on based on the, 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 the like, I had a I had a solid game against John. Mm, but, oh yeah. But, you know, but the the game against Stafford, I I I just got landlocked, and mm -hmm. you know, and again again I was I was going through after we were done, I was just kind of drawing the next couple of cards, and and it was just sight 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 sight. So I had I. I knew, I knew as soon as I saw the government, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in for, I'm in for a, uh, a, a uh, long game and, and then, or not, not a long game, big, bigger pardon. And then, uh, 
and then when I saw all those sites, I was like, I, I would have been killed pretty fast anyway. So, hey, let's uh, should we open some packs just to just to do something here? I sure. think that's a great idea, Nathan. Go ahead and uh, are they premiere? They are. You okay, wanna, you want to flip out to my other camera? Or... Yeah, and I'll bring it into the forefront. And I'll show you, I was... while, you're, yeah. while, you're, while you're doing that, I thought I'd show you this because um, the only site that was played, right, was uh, Coastal Northwest Oregon, right? Uh, was it? Oh, yeah. Coastal yeah, so Northwest I, Oregon, so, right? yeah, so I thought I'd, I, I thought I'd show this. This is a uh, one of a kind. This is the Coastal Northwest Oregon uh, Gilded. Silver? Mm -hmm. Silver Gilded. I thought you were going to say it was signed by Oregon. <laughs> the state signed it. The state, the state signed. And the, governor, the governor, the governor of Oregon signed this card. I don't, I don't want her near me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So actually, while Nathan's opening that first pack, um, I was going to throw out another tip. Uh, for all the contenders who might be tuning in to watch this, because I mean, hey, you guys can take what we say with a grain of salt. Um, you know, uh, some of us have just as many losses as we have wins. But what I would also suggest, um, one thing we have not seen in any of these games really are killer cards. And lest any of you forgotten, this tournament is killer card legal. Our killer cards are legal in this tournament, Mike. And we saw that we saw the host. We did see one host. Yes, um, didn't get any. Uh, didn't get a chance to get up close and personal with any of the agents, as I recall. But nonetheless, there is oh, killer card there, for you right there. It's very fitting that that came up. So there's a great killer card to have. And if you got hosting on your team, which most people do, that is a good card to include in there because you need hosting in order to get that card. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> dang, that was, that was like a game of X Files right now. Wait, wait, how yeah, many? How many? X, how many X Files is that? Like Two, eight, three, right? Four, five, six, seven, nine. Eight, nine. 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 I'm gonna open. I'm gonna. I'm gonna open a pack or two too, and see if I can beat that record. All right. Uh, speaking of X Files, uh, Mike, how about this? We'll give you the win over Nathan tonight if you can do a one in forty-one guess of his X File. Oh. One in forty-one guess. Yeah, you will get the win. By the way, I don't agree with this at all. <laughs> 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 really, I no. <laughs> But I mean, if he did, that's pretty awesome, though, right? All right, take it away, Mike. Uh, Sheriff that's Tom Aarons. Nope. It was. Go ahead, Nathan. My X file was reverse engineers. Yep, and that wasn't even one of the nine that came up in that pack. Um, yeah. A solid was, government adversary, just like yours. Very much so. And yeah, I want to yeah. point out that that is the third time in this season that reverse engineers was the selected X file and that is, is only really? seconded by what's that? Is it really? I, I yeah, took that randomly. Time. Yeah. And interestingly that is only the that's the that that card is only trailing Colonel Wharton the zombie master, which has appeared four times since this tournament began, which is crazy because I know most of you guys are just choosing randomly. But apparently Colonel Wharton the zombie master is just like I don't know, he somehow like lulling people over to select him but it's for some people it may not be working out so well because i think most of them were not wins actually i'll have to double check that but yeah what do we got in the next pack so help me help me out here steven is uh is broad street i think ufo wreckage is a rare but is broad street a rare? it is uh you no know, i don't think actually i think maybe the truth is out there edition might be um if it was one of those that was changed hold on pulling it up right now this uh, this pack fortunately only has two X files. Bunch of witnesses all stacked together. <clears throat> Broad Street. I believe Broad Street's a rare. It's an un. I have it listed as the in uh, the premiere edition is an uncommon or fixed, and then the other edition is a common. So yeah, I mean, two, but that's where right. and heart, you get two rares in a pack, right? You're supposed yeah, to. you're supposed to, or an ultra uh, I rare. Think I got. I, I think I got shafted on that pack actually. Well, is the killer? Oh no! Isn't true? What about True Grid in the the, the same? That was the, the first same. pack. Yeah, True Grid oh, and Hartley were the first pack. Those are the two rares there. Uh, okay. Wreckage, well, wreckage is rare. I didn't think Broad Street is rare. Was. Is Autopsy yeah. rare? No, I don't no. think so. I feel like I have okay. so many of those. Let me go check. Okay. And unless my, I mean, I'll have to compare to some of the other sites because I, yeah, I could be wrong on mine. 
Um, autopsy is uncommon. Okay. Well, well we we chapter in uh, their packs recently. Who was it, Jonathan? No ultra rare in that last op- unboxing, right? <laughs> Yeah, the, the the search the search for a uh... Mike's got something. So you got there, Mike. Uh, I got an Eve Seven. And, uh, no, no, these oh, are, I just opened a pack. And no, uh, series of pack. Man strikes, which I love. Kresge. Yep. <laughs> I don't agree, but okay. But nevertheless, <laughs> let's see how. Uh, yeah, I got. Uh... You got David May backing you up on it as the video. Um, yeah, you know, that we yeah, just yeah. today. Oh, so, zero! I got zero X Files in this pack. Zero. Nice. No, that's a good pack. Right, so I have, uh, I have two, two rare combat cards. It looks like fast draw yeah. chokehold. Yeah, those are the rares. Some, oh, so uh, speaking of, so I want to do another. I want to do another tip for the um for you guys um that I strongly suggest. Um, so after hosting. Who's the second most frequently occurring agent on in these fourteen decks? I'm sure you guys probably already know. Probably Lamana. I'm not saying Mulder. No, actually, it's Crycheck. And um, yeah, there is a killer card. Like there is a killer card specific to Crycheck. Crycheck is a double agent. So I strong and again. So tournament legal killer cards. Bring them. So if you got Crycheck the double agent. That's not a bad inclusion in your decks, knowing that a oh. lot of people are including Crycheck in there. So you can use that card to turn your opponent's Crycheck against the agents on the opposing side, and then there you go. So you can, uh, um, and, and if he, and if he, and if Crycheck loses that fight against his own teammates, then he gets removed from the game. So that's a worthy inclusion when you got a lot of people throwing Crycheck in there because you know his subterfuge and long range are pretty desirable. Mm-hmm. Here we go, last pack. What do we got? Take cover and a run for it. Very nice. Oh! Oh! Everything is turning up Nathan tonight. Uh, Look at that. Hey, Nathan, look at the back of that uh, package you just opened. Was the silver, was the foil, like, present on that, or? No. I mean, I don't don't see it. There's a sliver on there. Yeah, sometimes it is just the sliver, right, Mike? Yeah. That's awesome. That's okay. pretty damn cool. Good stuff. Well, oh wow, hold up. So we got isn't alien discretion around? I believe it is. Yes, should be. Yeah, because that is one of my favorite cards. It's like if, a, remember, if, if you remember from File Fest, uh, Mike Mackey showed up yeah. with his literal box truck, literal box truck full of X Files cards, premier packs that have all been gone through. Right? Yeah. He loaded them on a trolley. I brought them down to our little, uh, you know, corner of the world. And Steven and I sat there for quite a while. I mean, it was probably a good hour or more going through, like, mm-hmm. look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Because initially we thought that there were no more ultra rares. They were all cherry picked. Well, then who was it? Who was it that was playing? Uh, uh, it was in the middle of a tournament game. It was some, Chris. Uh, One of them was not, Chris. I don't. Was it? Was it? Chris? I think it was somebody else that pulled. Uh, no, no. Well, you did, but no. They pulled a. Uh, uh, dang it! What's hold on? Uh, pulled two ultra rares. One was a Dana Scully abducted, which I think I gave to Nathan, or you was did. it Dana? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then I pulled. Oh, uh, they pulled a counterintelligence measures. Out of one of their decks, out of one of their packs, they got a counterintelligence measures, and they're like, "Hey, man, I got this counterintelligence measures," and that's when we we were like, "Uh oh, maybe we should check these packs," you know. And uh, you found a a deep throat, which was your Mm -hmm. very first uh, deep throat. Yep, yep, awesome. I still remember. Mm -hmm. Oh well, let's give it to Chris, and you're like, "Well, no, here, give her this one," because I want to keep this one. I'm and I'm in my mind. Even they're the same card, and you're just like, no, this is important. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a deep throat that I just pulled from a pack. The other deep throats I have were acquired <laughs> through like Mike, Ma- specifically like bought through like Mike Mackey or like eBay. <laughs> no, I want the deep throat that I pulled randomly from a pack that we oh. didn't think was going to actually have one because we were going through all of those, and it, they all had like the slit, like larger slivers, and it didn't look like it was an ultra rare pack um, from the outside. So yeah. that was a real surprise. But like honestly, like at the end of that, I mean, if you remember Stephen, because like we had, I mean, I think there's pictures, but we had a literal mound of cards, like a mountain yeah. of of packs, mm-hmm. and 
Mackey didn't want him back. Even if Mackey wanted him back, he told us, I don't want him back and get rid of him. And we're like, what are we going to do with these things? So it was literally like just walking around to like, you know, the, the half a dozen people that were there besides just us and just setting boxes in front of them and going, have fun, bye. <laughs> this is your problem now. So I don't think I, I heard know, him I, say that. Otherwise, I would have grabbed a few more to go just for, you know, giveaways or whatever. Right. But dang. Um, yeah, I, well, I would have grabbed some too, but I was thinking like, you know, uh, flying home, you know, like we were yeah. already so weighted down. And then the irony behind this, um, you, you guys will love this. We give all this stuff away. We're trying to get rid of all this stuff. We finally, finally get rid of it all. Right. And then hey, you guys want to go upstairs and like have a beer and maybe get some pizza or something. Yeah, let's go upstairs. So we go upstairs. No one's up there but us and the staff. They're just going to make us whatever. And we're sitting up there and we're like, damn, we should play some games. And they're like, yeah, that sounds fun. Shit, do we have any cards? Uh, <laughs> we did. We had just enough. We had just enough. And, and like, we had like two or three starter decks left That's and they right. all had the same agents. That's right. Um, and we didn't like it was. It was like bare, bare bones, like old school style, you know, like you just give somebody a starter deck and a premier booster and say, have fun. And that's what we did for a few hours up there uh, yeah. just because we could, you know, but yeah, man, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. We each got to, I think we each got to play at least one game with each person that was there. It's so, like, I played a game with Nathan. I played a game with Dave Meyer. Or, uh, Mike, I did I play, I, did we, we played a game, did we? I don't know. I don't think we did, and I know I didn't play Dave May there uh, either because it was always one of us. Yeah, I did play Mike. I completely fucked up my, uh, his checklist. Uh, <laughs> I think I confused my X file at one point, and uh, and he's like, "Well, what the hell is going on here? You know, what are you trying to pull?" <laughs> jumped across the table at me. No. Oh yeah, that's what. Well, Dave yeah. talks about it in the interview. He's just flipping the table, like, "Here we go." Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> Did, I yeah, Jonathan. I bet like because you guys, uh, you guys drove, if I'm not mistaken. So like, I was just handing him stacks of. Like yeah. stacks of oh, premier yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah, I didn't play. I didn't play a lot of people, man. That's that's my one biggest regret. But like, I get into that like host mode where I'm just yeah. running around trying to make sure everything's going great and perfect everywhere. But I, I don't really think about myself. I, unfortunately, I didn't until that second night when everything was shut down. That, that second night was finally like when I was able to play some games and and unwind a little bit. But it was it was a, yeah. it was a blast regardless. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I I, yeah. uh, I won that yeah. uncut sheet and I didn't want to take it home either. So Jonathan, Jonathan's son got that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Hopefully, proudly displayed somewhere. Yeah, and a lot of people took home uh, playtest cards from ten thirteen as well. Oh, so yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I grabbed some of those. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think actually I might have it. I might still have it in here just to share with you guys in case you didn't see it. Yeah, here we go. Um, so Chris, Chris won, yep. and he actually got the uncut sheet uh, and the signed from David May uh, checklist. You know, good job with a win, uh, nothing but game, David May. I, that's pretty, that's pretty dang cool. Mm -hmm. It was a cool game to watch, but except for you know, da poor David May. <laughs> yep, there. Yep, yep. Very cool. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, and that was that was really cool of uh, of Dean Haglin to come up and hang out with us for a while. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I think none of us knew how far away we were going to be. So and far, and right, and people didn't have time with the schedule changes to walk literally a quarter mile. To come down and hang out with us. Yeah. We should have been in that main room when you first came in. We should have been right there, man. Mm -hmm. We had the room. We had, I mean, it, it would have been amazing. But hindsight's 2020. It is what it is. Um, but by the time I got Dean 
and walked a quarter mile of the mall with Dean Haglund, which was a surreal experience in and of itself. It was. I did that too. Because <laughs> um, he's he's a talker, man. It's not it's not it's not a silent walk. He'll um, <laughs> he'll talk he'll talk your ear off for a quarter mile, man. Don't get me wrong. Um, and by the time we got there, you know, there's probably you know between you know Stephen, you and me, and David May, and and uh, you know there's maybe a half a dozen people there. Mm-hmm. Maybe it wasn't a huge showing. And I mean, I remember just kind of looking at Dean, and he's like, "What can I do?" And I'm like, "Make Science everyone." Stuff. Yeah, Stein some stuff and make everyone feel special. And then he's like, okay. <laughs> you know, and he just signed. He, like, uh, Max had a table, like, a literal just table of cards. Card, 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 card. You know, and he just hands him a Sharpie. And he's like, here you go, mate. Um, and he just he just signed, like, freaking everything. And then uh, once he got everything signed, he just scooped up a bunch of them and he just wandered around. And he's like, you should put one of these in your in your deck. You should put one of these in your hand, you know. Um yeah, it was it was very surreal. And then by the time you know he he took care of everybody and met everybody, got pictures with everybody. It was just like, okay, man, see you later. He's like, yeah, see you later. You know, um, but yeah, he was such a good sport, man. Yeah. And he was one of the few actors there on that second day because most of them had left on Saturday. Was Rebecca Tulin there on Sunday? Because I know she had COVID. She got sick. Remember, like she, I think she got. I don't she know, got she got yeah and i think uh yeah so if she was there on saturday but i think um i don't think she i don't can't recall if she was slated to to re- to be there for the second day but she wasn't because yeah she wasn't feeling well <laughs> yeah i know uh she was there that night uh that uh, the first night that dax and i went over to the bar and uh she was like drunk as hell man <laughs> i did not think my entire <laughs> life i would ever seen Mulder's mom just tanked and and you know obviously larry musser was there and he was oh my god you want to talk about a little chatty kathy i mean i talk a lot don't get me wrong dean talks a lot don't get me wrong larry musser holy crap dude if if he sees a pretty girl and he garners her attention it is freaking over bro (laughs) we watched him from we literally dax and i watched him for hours going to table 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 until he made multiple circles and then came around to us and we're like how you doing man he's like good guys how are you like good man okay i'll see you later i would have asked him how many how many digits did he get uh circulating to all those tables oh dude he wears uh he wears his uh his headband Mm-hmm. And uh, he just he works the tables, man. He just he works it. Um, a lot of none of the other celebs. I mean, uh, Brendan Beiser was a little bit. Um, uh, oh, man, I'm going to draw a blank and I'm going to feel uh, Spender. Uh, Chris Owens. What's what's that? Chris Owens. Chris Owens. Thank you. Uh, Chris Owens witnessed me personally accost Chris Carter. Uh, that was that was special. Uh, I, I just ambushed him. I, I it was by the door. I knew he was coming out. I didn't want an autograph. I didn't want a picture. I just wanted to shake the man's hand. I had a couple beers in me. I was courageous. <laughs> Liquid courage. Yeah. And he comes out with his aunt. Chris Carter, like legit, like rolls with an entourage. Did you notice that, Stephen? Like that was legit. Oh, yeah. And he comes out with his entourage, and I just like straight up, like I'm like, hey, Mr. Owens, Mr. Owens, or not Mr. Uh, Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter. He's like huh and everybody's like what and, and i mean i got a couple of like who the f are you looks you know and i'm like hey man i just wanted to say thank you that's all i wanted to say i want to shake your hand and say thank you and he's like oh okay you're welcome and i was like cool man and they leave and they leave that way and i turn back to the bar this way and chris owens is standing at my 12 o'clock and he's standing against the wall and he's looking dead at me he just goes <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, fucking Spender's giving me the fucking head bob right now. Like, what is what is happening? Where am I? Yeah, it was. Dude, it was file, file Fest was pretty surreal. It was. You know, I a lot of the um, a lot of the actors were much more personable than I would think they would be. Like, oh, yeah. you know, after after uh, 
after the show's going this long and you've done this many conventions and events and all this stuff, you know, it's, it's gotta, I don't know, it would wear on me and um, guys like Nicholas Lee was like, just thrilled to be there. And he took so much time. Chris Carter was like engaging with everybody at his mm -hmm. table, you know, and he, he'd talk to you like to the point where his entourage was getting really irritated about the amount of time he was spending <laughs> yeah. with people, you know? What, what uh, you got to rem... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish off. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I, I was just, just commenting on, on really how remarkable um, a lot of those actors were. What, what you got to remember is you've got to have a bit of an ego to be an actor, right? So when 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 the, the love and adoration is all pouring on you all day, even though it can feel like a grind for them it's just fueling them up right so yeah. not, i'm not saying i'm not saying it like it to be be negative or whatever but it's just like you know to to be able to do that you got to have you know some that that kind of that kind of personality that that digs that you, you don't have you don't have shy introverts being being actors so right yeah yeah i think it, it, it hit me it hit me right away because I, I got in before uh, before everybody else, or at least from our, our little crew. And, uh, you know, the first thing I did is obviously, you know, like, okay, yeah, they're they're down there. They're doing their thing or whatever. I got to go check on our, our, our area. And so I did that and, you know, met them. And then I walked down to File Fest and I walked in and there was like, literally, there was nobody there. Like, can I see your ticket or can I? See? No, it was just like, you guys, you know, you know, like it was just an open atrium free for all, uh, you know, ask anybody that um, you could just walk in and basically meet whoever you wanted. And I remember I go up to the table and I'm like, yeah, I'm Mike with uh, MMX File CCG. And they're like, OK. And I'm like, cool. Uh, do you have anything you know, like do you have any you have any stuff for me? And they're like, Yeah, you're you're at the other place. And I'm like, Yeah, cool. All right, this has been a good talk. And I and I just turn around and I look and straight back there, there's just freaking Jerry Harding sitting at a table by himself, nobody in no line, people. no people talking to him. Just there's there's fucking there's deep throat. He's just right there. And I'm like, Jerry, Jerry Harden wasn't much of a talker, though. He wasn't, but look how freaking old the dude is. I, I would be well, well, legitimately. No, that's what I'm saying. I'd be legitimately surprised. And I, and I gotta I gotta share this one thing. The best dress uh, of them all, though. Oh my god! Yes, yeah. suit and everything. Yeah. Well, that dude, that dude stepped it up. So he did. I, I gotta I gotta say, my prized possession, absolute prized possession from Gen uh, Kai. Kai. File Fest, yeah, is uh, can't top that. Is I got my Jerry Harding uh, Gen Con. Nice. Well, it's not it's not Gen Con, but oh, here we go. Yeah, same. Yeah, so that's a big well, let me show you my deep throat. Jerry Harding also wins for best signature that's that stood the test of time. Right, unlike, unlike Nick Lee's, unfortunately, lovely love how engaging he was, but damn, his signature is not what it was back in '97. Yeah, uh, Stephen, you and I were just talking about that with the uh, crack yeah. check the other day. Yeah, I, I, I had him a '97 one and a current one, and yeah, it is it is staggering how different they look. But by the yeah. time he signed your your crack check at File Fest, he had probably signed. Uh, yeah, 987 other autographs. So <laughs> to be fair, we were at the very, we were the last three he signed for before he went. He he called it a day. So that is a fair assessment. There's uh, a th this was this was the card that I came in uh, as my holy grail. This was the only one I I came in saying I'm getting Stephen Williams on an X, mm -hmm. and uh, that was mission accomplished within the first ten minutes. I think. What, what were they char charging for autographs there? 40. <laughs> 40 but uh <laughs> so it was forty dollars to get you a paper ticket that was just obviously xeroxed right yep some of the actors uh had help like uh uh mitch pelleggi uh you had to go through their secretary first or whatever and they'd say give me your ticket they would take your ticket, they'd slide the card over him, then he would sign it. Some of them were yeah. really legit, right? But I'd say 90% of the rest of them, uh, you just give it to the actor. 
they'd sign it and then they just throw it in a pile over here. Well, then at the end of the day, they weren't doing anything. Like they just got up and left. So I remember the first night back at the hotel room. <laughs> remember this, Stephen? Yeah. Oh, I do. Dax, Dax shows back up. And he's yeah. got like a stack of autograph tickets, like this freaking big. And we're like, dude, where'd you get that? He's like, they just leave them on the table. They don't give a shit. I just grabbed them. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like well, I, and realized that too. I realized that too late on Saturday. And uh, I started doing that as well. But by then I was like, not really getting any, there was not, no more autographs again. So I saved them all for the next day. But by then you mostly had just like the writers and directors and very few of the actors were, yeah. were still there on the second day. And and half of them weren't even half of them weren't even half of them weren't even accepting the tickets anyway. You just walk up and like get this sign, and they're just like, okay, like they didn't care. All right, so here's uh, here's ninety seven Nick Lee's signature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Even put ninety seven on it. Even put ninety seven on there. Embrace yourselves. Here is Nick Lee's signature. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. That's like that's like Stan Lee's signature. Like, yeah, you, you got really nice Stan Lee's, and then and by, the, by the end of it, it was just like, wow, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> my my holy my my holy grail, the one that I wanted to get more than anyone, uh, just based solely upon the channel, what we've talked about, the lore of the game, yeah, uh, was, was this guy right here, was Chris Carter to sign yeah. Simple of Faith. Cool. Uh, yeah, I had to get one of those too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I um, yeah. Fortunately, you know, I, I doubt he's watching, but uh, you know, fortunately, Dax, because I was so, you know, social butterflying around, uh, Dax was able to get me a lot of these uh, autographs that I couldn't stand in line to get. Uh, mm-hmm. And Stephen as Thanks. well. I think you were there, you were there with him as well for a lot of those. Yeah, because well, you know, so. yeah, I was trying to go back and forth. Well, I was walking that quarter of a mile which i swear mike that felt more like a mile than a quarter mile um but yeah i was like i gotta go check in on the tournament can you get like because dax actually got me the chris carter symbol of faith sign because i was like i gotta go i need to go check in on what's happening over there (laughs) indeed and i will say this this one too is one of the um for sentimental value just history wise is one of the coolest pieces that i own um so this is a the no one so paranoid that when Matt and I uh, first started the channel, uh, Matt found a lot of cards on eBay, and he bought it just randomly. He wasn't sure what was going to be on it. And the gold signature is uh, Tom Braidwood. We got this and realized that was the same uh, pen and uh, style that was used at uh, Gen Con. Uh, so more than likely, this no one so paranoid was signed at Gen Con, and that's the only signature was there. Uh, we then, about six months later, at least something like that, we got uh, the interview with Dean Hagland. Uh, we sent the card through the mail all the way to California and then up to Canada. Dean signed it, sent it back to us. And then at File Fest, uh, years later after that, we finally met Bruce and got Bruce to sign it. So this complete trilogy of signatures spans 20-plus uh, years. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to get them three different events that this card has been to the stories of where this card has been yeah. is amazing. And I think that's why this is my favorite piece that I own. So, so Mike, I, uh, we've got the same thing going on here. This, oh, okay. was, uh, this was signed by, uh, Braidwood and, and Hagelin at the initial Gen Con. Mm-hmm. And I finally got uh, Harwood, Harwood completed it at uh, File Fest. Very cool. Nice. So very, very similar cool. story. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's just amaz- amazing the lengths that uh, will we, but you know the royal we uh, will go uh, to 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 get some of these things signed, and never a complaint, nary uh, a, a negative uh, emotion behind it. Just so awesome to, to have these things. And, uh, you know, when the sun explodes, we're all going to die and they're all going to be ash. But, uh, but be, beyond that, <laughs> but until then, but until then, I don't know. Mike, Mike's deck might, might wind up ash well before that. <laughs> I'm more, I'm you, know what, you know what won't be ash? The pewters, they'll still be, they'll still survive that. 
No, oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be cockroaches and the five uh, Mulder Peters and the two uh, Scully Peters, yeah. wherever that second. Yeah, one they'll, is. they'll be that the <laughs> second one that you have no clue where where it is. Uh, the I've been I've been Scooby doing that, my friend. I, I've got I've got an idea. I, I well, well, Mike, we don't want to split. I mean, we do. Let's just say we. Oh, ask. I'm not saying no. I if 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 I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying shit, and I know why David yeah. May isn't saying shit. Because yeah, 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 no, I get it. But we do ask him that question in the video that we just uploaded yeah, today. today. Yeah. Oh, you already watched it? Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> he is. That Man, is his. In <laughs> I have um, some. Somebody posted one of the comments on on the video is I leaned in close too. <laughs> Yeah. We knew he wasn't going to tell us, like, because we've asked him before, and he he won't. I, I mean, we get it. If the person doesn't want to divulge themselves, like, that's fine. It's just, it's crazy that they won't. <laughs> well, I mean, a few it, copies of that thing. <laughs> you know, I, I I mean, I know with the first tournament, Kevin, Marion, and I, and Matt, we had our differences. Yeah. It did not go as smooth as planned. I, for one, and as well as Matt, had never done a tournament before. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. Kevin obviously did, but we were supposedly the ones that were in charge. It was just, it was a shit show. I'm going to say it. Um, but the one thing that kind of sucks is like when I asked Kevin if I could, you know, if Dave rather could borrow the, the Scully pewter just to bring it to FileFest to share it with everybody. The first thing he said was, well, it's in storage somewhere. I'm going to have to dig it out. And I mean, no, no offense personally to Kevin Marion, man, but like, god damn, dude, like that sucks. Like, I, if I had that thing, I'd be. I mean, I got a display here. I mean, Stephen, every game that you had this pewter, mm -hmm. you know, every game <laughs> right on your table, right? You know, like I want to display this stuff and share it with everybody. And now, one of the two things that's basically impossible for anyone to see is just in a storage box somewhere and the other is more than likely in a safety deposit box in a Swiss bank account, you know, and it just, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. It's too bad they're not, they don't feel the need to carry on that tradition of uh, keeping the game alive. <laughs> hey, you, you, you know, I'm, I'm glad you got to, to hang out with the pewter. Uh, it was know. an honor. Loved it. Uh, loved every bit. And I love playing with it, win or lose. <laughs> Right. <laughs> is, that, yeah. is it back in Mike's possession now? It yeah, is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 So I sent it out to him on Tuesday. Just and, arrived uh, yeah. the, right at the end of this morning's game, actually. Hmm. Yeah. I told him if it arrives while the game's going on, then you should just, you know, show it off there because it is, it's come back home. It, it lasted its little stay here in Texas, but it was ready to come home. And, and, you know, like Steven, honestly, like at the end, you know, like if someday, like it's the end of my channel and I'm just ready to move on or whatever, like, and you're still rocking your channel, I'll send it back to you to keep, you know, like I, 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 I'm not going to sit on this thing. You know, I, as long as this tradition, as long as this tradition keeps yeah. going, I want to make sure that it's there so everyone can enjoy it and everybody can, can appreciate it. That's, that's my big thing. Yeah. And whatever. Put it in a storage box. Come on. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Not a chance, my friend, because that is the one thing I promised. I'm not religious, but, you know, hand to God, I promised Brian Woodward when he passed that along to us uh, that that was the unspoken rule, that the pewters would never be sold. Yeah. Yep. Never. Like and it never will be. I know you keep asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, um, if, if uh, nothing else, it could um, go into the, uh, the X-Files Museum. If we shutter everything yeah. tomorrow, they'd be happy to display it. I'm sure. Not oh, that yeah. that's imminent. I'm just. I'm just saying. Well, and if and if you know, and and if that's a place, you know, that it eventually ends up, at least you know, uh, Scully Peters and <laughs> <laughs> no way, man. I, I call. I call. Uh, I call bluff on that one. I call BS. Well, um, he's about the only one who could act, who could afford whatever the insane amount that would be thrown out there for it so yeah him, him and him and kurt because uh yeah oh yeah kurt too yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the, the, cat, the catacombs of things that uh kurt has would definitely God probably, in heaven, so probably like to me that's like a mecca right there as many comics as he has like that's what i want i mean this is a pittance 
compared to what Kurt has. And that that's like the that was that really like I think maybe it was you that said that Mike. It looks like the <laughs> government facility at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> oh, dude, people said that. Yeah, I think it was like so dead on. I was like, yeah, and it's got all the treasures that you know I long for. Yeah, indeed. All right, gents. I think yeah. Let me uh, just post the count. Let me just put up the calendar real quick, and then I'll just do a quick outro. Sorry, guys. Uh, cool. So, anyone who's still watching, we have uh, share screen. Boom! Here's what we're looking at for uh, the next uh, for this coming weekend. We've already wrapped up the games today on the 18th, so we're looking at three games happening on Sunday the 21st, starting with Paul Cuomo versus David Peace right in the morning. Mike, you better. You better uh, get that coffee percolating because that's 8 a.m. for you, my friend. And then Paul's going to be doing a follow-up match later that day uh, against Matt Sauron. And then lastly, we got Dave Meyer playing John Wood, and that's going to be their third and final game for the pre-playoffs. And then on the 25th, we'll have John Yost and Matt Sauron completing their games. Um, and then there's only two games left to schedule. So I know that's, I think it's Kurt, uh, Sky and Nathan, you, yeah, you're one of the remainders for the last two to fit in that slot. So yeah, we're almost there people. So, um, the, st the standings are starting to fall into where they're going to be looking at going into the final. So we're almost there. Excellent. Excellent. All right. And Keep killing it guys. This has been a, a lot of fun. It has been. Let's not, do that. Not, not tonight. But not but, tonight, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a weekend out of it. But uh, of course, everyone you know who's watching, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do so, and please subscribe to Matt and Mike's X Files CCG, of course, because I mean you're you, you're getting the tournaments both here and on that channel. So hit that subscribe button for both of them, and of course, like the videos and throw some comments up there. Uh, Nathan, Mike, and Mike, uh, thank you guys all for gracing this channel with your presence this uh, Thursday night. Let's uh, say good night and please be sure to tune in next time for another edition of Alien Investigations. And we're at.